All right, for this particular lesson, we're going to be uh, revisiting a, an exercise that we did in AutoCAD, which was the key plate, uh, but we're going to be using Inventor to do it. So as always, we're going to start out with a part file. Okay, so once we're into our 3D space here, uh, we're going to start out with a 2D sketch and we're going to be utilizing the XY plane. And we're going to start out with a rectangle. So actually, I'm going to use something different this time. I'll use a two point center re rectangle. I'm going to start from the middle. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to take a shortcut to this process. And I'm going to make this seven inches long. And I think I already pretty much did it four and a half inches tall. So it's pretty close already. So it kind of kept the proportion that it needed to. All right, so uh, to kind of shortcut the process and make this a little bit easier to do, uh, we're going to go ahead and put a circle in the middle. And this circle is going to be three inches in diameter. So you can pop it there if you like and go ahead and put three on it. Or you can type in three as you go along. All right, so we're going to finish the sketch. I'll zoom this out. And if you zoom in, it kind of gets lost in 3D space and that happens all the time. You can always, um, you can always just, um, double click on your roller wheel on your mouse and zoom it into perspective so we're going to go ahead and we're going to extrude this face and we're going to make it's going to be a thin extrude so it's going to be 0.25 and that's going to give us the initial plate so we can kind of spin that around and look at it I'll take it back to the home view. All right, so we're gonna our next step. Uh, we're gonna normally put a another sketch and then we start doing something else. But before we do that, this time uh, we're gonna use a new tool, which is the fillet. All right, so the fillet is gonna round the corners and edges like we use filling in AutoCAD and Revit. You can actually use it in 3D space. So uh, we're gonna set the radius to one, and then. We're just simply going to select the corner edges of these. So make sure that you're selecting the corners and not the flat edges. And you can kind of spin it around to see the other side. Remember that you're designing in 3D, so you can always spin it around and look at it from a different direction. And then after you have all four corners, hit OK. And we'll put it back in home view. And then that's the beginning of our next step. All right, so now we're going to put a 2D sketch on it. All right, so each one of these little curves at the corner has a center point. So it's just kind of a matter of just trying to find it. Um, probably the easiest way to do it is to put project geometry on the surface. And then once you do that, you see you're going to get these little yellow dots. And these yellow dots are the center points. So I'm going to show you a little something else that we can do besides using a circle. We're going to use another tool, which is the hole tool. So we're going to click on hole. Move this out of the way. And we're going to select the type that we want. Well, I guess I should have just left that in the middle to show you what type that we're going to be using. So we're going to be using a straight. It's not going to have a 
adhere to it. So it's just gonna be this first one, which is a simple hole. And it is going to be that already has the right number. Let me check and see. Uh, let's see. So oh that's three fourths. So point seventy five. It's gonna be that number. So while you're still in this dialog box. You'll just go ahead and select each one of those little dots. Looks like it's not letting us do multiple select. Oh, we did it. Let's see how this first one works. All right. Mm -hmm. well, I guess it did. It's kind of odd the way it's doing it. But um, let's see. So we may have to reverse the direction on it. The reason I may be doing something strange here. Mm -hmm. I hate that they changed this. This used to just have a drop down the pool so you can put wherever you want it to go. Uh, to in to, oh, there it is, to go. So, let's see what this does here. If this doesn't work, then we'll use the, the holes. All right. I mean, use the circles. The whole tool has kind of changed a little bit from the last time I've used it. All right, so it's letting me do everything with cut the hole. All right, so we're just going to cancel that. We'll just use circles for right now because I don't want to spend a whole lot of time trying to trying to do that. So in order to use the circles, so we're just going to double click on sketch number two and just go ahead and quickly do it with that. The whole tool, I'm going to play with it a little bit longer since it's changed on this new version. And we're just going to do 0.75 for each one of these circles here. And we'll just do all four of them. Finish the sketch. And let it extrude. And I'm going to put it on cut. All right. So now, next step. We're going to put the, the two slots in. So we're going to do sketch on the front face again. Uh, I'm going to use uh, project geometry. And 
and I'm going to do another circle. But I'm going to line up with this point, go down to this center, then do 0.75. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. All right, so what I'm going to do next is take a rectangle. And I'm going to go from the bottom. Oh, we got to use a different one. Oh, you know what? I could use that same one. Now that I think about it. Let's move a little slow. I technically could do that. All right, so if I touch the top of one, it should actually even out for both. So if I lock in right here, let's zoom out. Slow response with this today. All right, so I'm gonna put it on the home view. Oh, there we go. All right, so by doing the center point circle, it really should have kind of centered it. It's kind of doing its own little thing. All right, there we go. All right, so by doing the center point circle from the middle, once I touch and locked into one of the tops of the circle, it automatically locked the rectangle into the bottom and the top on the opposite side. So uh, that actually kind of worked out really well so uh, we'll go ahead and finish the sketch and we're gonna cut all that through so we just got to select it so select the circle select the rectangle put it on cut It okay, bam, that worked out really well. All right, so last but not least, we're gonna do the same thing, but this time we're gonna go up and out. All right, so it's going to be. About should be roughly about one point. We well, should really be about three point seventy five tall. So we can have to change two of the numbers. And it's point seventy five wide. So we just kind of put it in place first. Then use our dimension tool to adjust the numbers. So it's going to be 3.75 this way, 0.75 this way, and because it's coming from the center, it automatically adjusts. So we hit check mark, extrude to cut, hit OK, bang, and we are done with the key plate. As far as the model, so it's gonna make sure we save it. And hit save, and we're gonna start our drawing. So, so I'm gonna do new standard IDW. I'm going to change our sheet to a B size because I don't think that we need a C size for this. 
So let me just check and see. So edit sheet. Let's take this down to B. We'll leave it in landscape. And okay. Now we'll do base. Now let's see, we'll do the full scale. Let's see how it looks. That was huge. So we we'll want to do a seaside sheet. All right, so. So we'll add a sheet again. We'll just take it up to a C. And that looks better anyway. Doesn't like it's dominating the page. All right. So uh, from here, we're going to put in our center lines and everything we need. Uh, so this time, you don't have to try to worry about trying to connect all those center lines between all the holes. So uh, we're just going to go to annotate. And we're going to use the center mark for each of those small ones. Including the little arcs. And sometimes they give you a full one and sometimes they don't. So every once in a while you just got to grab the little green dots and pull them to the outside. All right. And it's going to be the same way with this one. Well, I'll tell you what, you can use this center line bisector. If you go from one point to the next, normally it'll give you a one that goes between the two points, but that's all right. So we'll have to we might have to use the other one too. So let's use um center mark. See what it does. And it doesn't give us much. So we've got to be a little slick here. So we're just gonna go between the two points. Right mouse click, hit create, and we'll do the same thing across this way. And I think that'll work. Yeah. All right, so now we're at our dimension phase. And we're pretty much going to follow a lot of the ones that are in the book. So it's not really that many dimensions to this thing. So it's really about three dimensions, about four dimensions. And a couple of radius. Yeah, so it's not a whole lot. I personally like to go a little bit below these sometimes, even though it gives me a mark for them. All right, now the reason I didn't go all the way up to the very top is because these corners are radiuses. Or plural radar. So, and that's going to be, you turn the button and we're going to do four places. Yeah, okay. All right, so. Um, tricky one is going to be um, really, not really this, it just really should be sand diameter, but it's going to give us a radius of 1.50 because it's not a complete circle. And the same thing is going to happen with these. It's just not going to give us a complete diameter. All right. And these. I'm going to hit the enter button, and this is going to say four holes. Because there's four of those. And we're going to go ahead and do, technically we need to do the, the little one first. I messed up on that. 
I should have gone between. Here and here. First. All right, so um, last but not least, we do need a dimension between either the center right here and the top of that thing. Because in the book, it gives one from the base of the of the circle at the top to the top of this, which is 0.38, but that's not really a really realistic dimension of that. So I'm just gonna put one between there and there and see if I can kind of find a place for it. And I think I'm gonna just put it, kind of put it right here. And then that's gonna be all the dimensions that I need for that. All right, so that's all. That's your length, that's your width, um, the size of the slot, the four holes in the corner. And all we need to do is go back to place, project it, click off to the side. We'll drag this up into the corner to give us our visual. Click once, right mouse click, create. And we're going to add a little color to it, which is not mandatory that you do so. We add a little color to it by clicking on the third button here. We hit OK. And it'll add some color to it. So if let's say for instance that you want to give it a material, um, you can go back to extrusion number one. And go to properties. And not necessarily a color, let's say we just want to do a not a material, but that's, well, let's just say we're going to do a, a color instead. So I'm going to change that to blue. I should probably do all of them the same thing, but just for the essence of time, I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to go back to my tab. And normally, yeah, okay, if you click on it, it'll update. Okay, so now comes the part where everyone seems to kind of lose it first your name file our properties if it pops up doesn't seem like our properties today Wait, wait. There we go. Summary. So change frame user to your name. Then we'll annotate. Click on the big old A. Make a box from top. You gotta hold down the mouse button for this. So you make you hold down the mouse button from the top left to the bottom right. You choose the second and the fifth option for the buttons here. And then this is what you're gonna type in the school in the program. Control two left and design. Not into intro. All right, same thing with the title. So you click, hold your mouse button down, and drag it from top left to bottom right you choose your second or your fifth option and i'm going to actually change the height to 124 and i'm going to type in a title all right so the rest of the information is already there so it telling us the sheet size it tells us what the scale is um just we use one up to a C size sheet, we can just use a one to one scale. So we don't necessarily need to use a one half. All right, so now you're going to export PDF. And it's probably already going to have a name, key plate. All right, so now the way that you have to download these, you're um, 
the desktop is probably missing some icons that you might not have this little these in the bar at the bottom so here's a way that you can download your file so you can just go back to export one more time and then PDF and the last thing that all the things you download is at yeah, all the things you have in a PDF are going to be here so what you do you click on the one that you want to do right mouse click download with frame and what it's going to do is going to drop it down to your normal desktop then that's where you're going to grab it down to your normal downloads and that's where you're going to grab it and actually turn it in from Schoology or turn it in on Schoology so that's how you're going to do that because uh, for some odd reason the desktops aren't showing up like they were before so we're going to hit escape on that all right so that's going to minimize that and i think that is it for that particular one uh make sure you get this one turned in uh this one will count as an assessment so you should be able to knock this out pretty easily in the amount of time that you have for between thursday and friday